Welcome back fellow BBS enthusiasts from the 1980s. I want to do this video walking through my restored BBS from 1987 to 1989 and I wanted to share kind of my journey and my process but also really importantly share with you kind of a walkthrough of the actual BBS that was painstakingly restored from from my original original discs and so let's walk through some of the steps so first to give you a little bit of background of my system it was on CNET 12.0 which if you remember from my previous videos was the predecessor to CNET uh, uh, was after CNET 11.1 and before image 1.0 this is the best that I can kind of figure out from all my research on the internet, kind of how CNET 64, you'll hear CNET and a lot of versions, you'll hear about Amigas, you'll hear all these different, everything. So this is the best that I could come up with for kind of the history of CNET, but I'm sure some folks in the comments can go ahead and correct me. But the version that we're talking about is CNET 12.0 right here in the middle. And that came from CNET version 10.0 in 1986. And you can see that really spawned a lot of versions after it. But, and also there was a separate trail that went 11.1 .1 and then went to 11.6 and DS2 and all that kind of fun stuff. But, but we're going to be sticking with good old CNET 12.0 for now. So uh, so let's go through a little bit of the process of what it took for me to restore my database or my, my BBS. It started back in 1987 when I ordered a, ordered a copy of CNET 12.0 called CNET 64, serial number 1555. I've, I worked that out with my system and, and my system had a lot of different pieces of hardware, pretty unique. In addition to the normal couple of 1541 1541 drives. I actually had an SFD 1001. Uh, for a while, I had the same MSD SD2. This isn't a picture. It's actually a picture I found online, but it actually is my exact same hardware. And for a while, I actually had the, C, the CBM model D9090, which was actually a five meg hard drive. So I had, back then, I had a lot of storage online and a lot of, uh, for the time, it was pretty, pretty big. There were a few, a few BBSs that had like 20 megs online, and I was always very envious of them. So I started by setting up my Commodore 128, my SFD 1001, and started going through my stacks and stacks of diskettes that I had. And I discovered a product called Zoom Floppy, and it was a really neat tool. It was a really neat tool that actually you could order it, and it lets you sit. It, it sits in between a USB port on your PC and the serial port on your 1541. So literally, or your SFD. Uh, actually, no, I ne I never did the SFD 1001, but more on that in a little second. But this actually allows you to interact with your 1541 drive on your PC. So really neat, really neat tool using using uh, an application called CBM Tools. Here's a quick shot of the CBM Transfer. Xfer allows you to go ahead and, and do some selections and actually copy over files. Now this works okay, but the tool that I really had success with was OpenCBM, which I had a lot better luck with because the file transfer just worked worked a lot better. And really, it's pretty easy to 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 use this. You just enter in the command, which in this case was uh, D64 copy uh, with a parameter of dash D, what kind of drive it is. I did no warp because it was more reliably copying. And I said, send it to an image on my hard drive. Put, put the floppy disk in, let it do its thing, and it copied and created me an image in D64 or in a D64 fa format, which of course all of you know allows you to open it right inside of right inside of uh, right inside of whether it's Vice or or one of my favorite tools, which is DIR Master, Directory Master. So what this allowed me to do, this started, what I had to do is I had to really start sorting through the stack of these diskettes and one by one just copying them all over because I had, it was a bit of a mystery of how all the pieces fit together because I was dusting off these disks after 30 plus years. So it was really, really challenging just figuring out exactly what my 15, 14, 16 year old brain was thinking back then. So disc after disc after disc, I just copied them over and over and over again. Here you can see my 
my Commodore 128, my 128 with the broken F7 key and a 1571 drive that I actually found on eBay a few years ago and just copied file after file after file from usually from SFD over to a floppy and then onto my computer. And then I went through just image after image. And here, here's a quick shot of that zoom floppy. And this is just, you can see here, it just plugs right into a USB port, any USB port on your PC. And this just goes to the serial port right over to your drive. So. And I literally did this for hours, hours and hours and hours with, with some help from a certain cat. And when I say hours, I literally mean hours and hours. You can watch it copying block per block from my computer to a disk, then over to Zoom Floppy. It would go to a disk, over to Zoom Floppy. This is a shot of my SFD 1001 after 30 years, working really hard to transfer the files over to over to the hard drive or over to the floppy drive so I can actually copy it and get it into an image. So the process was very, very tedious. So what this left me with was just image after image of just strange files that I had to somehow sort through. And because I had all these different images, this is only a few of them. I had all these different images of just random files that I had to kind of sort through. And I know I, I remembered some of them, like for example, I had this user config that was the user file. And I had all these different files because what happened was I actually lost my hard drive in a crash. And I do not remember what files were on the hard drive, but I know I had a lot of files on the SFD 1001. I had a lot of files on the on floppy drives. I had backups because I had problems. And so I had to really sort through all of these different files um, to figure out okay, what are all these, what are all these files and how do they all fit together? And so uh, I had to go through each one of these and I, I remembered a few of the things like, for example, CN, CN was the main, was the main um, program file of CNET and ML was the machine, the machine language file. And so it was really just a mystery of how all of these files work together. And it was really kind of a, a journey that took a couple hundred hours to really reassemble, to reassemble the, the BBS in not only a working way, but a, to get it to where it could represent what it looked like back in 1987, 88, 89. So, I really spent a couple of hundred hours on, and, and, and along with this, I actually, I actually kept some sort of like a log along with it because I started not, I started just to see if I could, if I could recreate, if I could get back some of the information and mainly the really, the, the main thing I was hoping to do was to get to this. Really when I started looking at all these files, I started going, can I, will I be able to see my BBS's login screen again? I remember what it looked like. I remember it had a skull. I remember it had colors, but I didn't remember much else beyond that. And I was like, I just wanted to see this picture again. And when I did it, I'm like, okay, can I log in? Can I log in? And then I started fixing bugs and I started making it better. And I started fixing things. And I started just all of a sudden, before I knew it, I had spent, dozens of hours trying to get it working. And that made me go look at other disks and starting to put together this big puzzle and this mystery of my BBS back from 1988. I started making a log of all my little fixes. I just said, oh, can I fix this? Can I fix this? Can I fix this? Can I get this subsystem working again? Can I get that subsystem working again? Can I fix that bug? And I just started documenting all the little things that I did. And you can see, I literally turned into over kind of a, a couple six month period, three month period, I just started fixing more and more and more and more. These are all individual fixes. Yes, I went crazy. I documented all of it just to keep a track and it just became more and more. And I literally, I literally fixed 
and tweaked and enhanced like 200 things over the course of like four months just to see if I can take what my original plan was to just get it to see if I could see that screen and see that login and log back in. I said, can I actually restore this and get it working on inside Vice so I can actually at any time I want to log into my bulletin board that was actually around 35 years ago. And it turned into what you see right in front of you, a my directory master with four different images. And the best I could replicate it was with two 1541s and two 1581s. That's what I did. So disk one is my is my system and boot disk. Uh, drive nine is my 1541, my 1541 drive that has user and the et cetera uh, disk. And uh, disk 10, which is a 1581, has all my P files and G files on it. And G files, we'll get into that a little bit more. But And then disk 11 is all my subs and my UD areas. So this is, I was able to resurrect a, a, a few of my, a few of my uh, message boards. So it's very, very strange going back there and looking at that. And then I rebuilt my UD area and a few of the, and I went back and I could find all all the mods I could remember uh, on my BBS and I was able to rebuild them and get them back and get them integrated into my system. So I was able to create this and literally what started off as a couple hour little pet project of mine turned into a couple hundred hour obsession over about three or four months, but it had, it was so much fun trying to solve all these problems and get it working and also relearning because in my mind, I always wondered, how did my 14, 15, 16 year old self learn how to do all these things? And the answer was, I, I was able to go in there and relearn all that stuff. And so it was a ton and ton of fun. So, um, so yeah, so that was my, that was my goal. I use Zoom Floppy. If you need any kind of help, that's going to be the end of this video. I just wanted to share how I restored my system and what I did and, um, and we can go, I guess really quick, we, we can go over the disks really, really quick because the boot and system disk, that has all your sys files, all your, all your subs, all your UDs, all your menus. Th this is the news section. This is the voting booth. This is the newspaper. And this is all the boot files on my, on my disk nine. I've got the macros. I've got my G files, which are the text files. P files, which is all the games, or this is just the directories of them, my user file, my alpha file, all the different messages, logs, all these things. And some of them, if you go back, like for example, like in this log, I mean, you can see, you can see that somebody logged in on August 15th, 1988, and guy named Running Man, and he went to this subsection, which is games three, 1988, he downloaded whatever BG Mon was, and you can see he, um, he he logged off, and then a guy named Nightstar logged on, and he put a response in, and and for those of you who remember this game, on August 30th, to the elite, elite board only, thank you, Robotico, he uploaded Pool of Radiance. So if you remember Pool of Radiance, give me a shout out, because that was a really, really great game. So it's that's just a little piece of, of what you can see when you go into the logs. You can see like the, the game Empire, you can see all the all the stats there, and then Empire Empire News and who who's beating who. And again, you look at these dates and it's just crazy because it's a, this is August 13th, 1988. So really, really neat. And I, I have no intentions of doing anything beyond I'm not modifying any of the actual content. I'm just making everything work together totally, totally bug free. So uh, disk 10 was, these are all the P files. These are all the applications that run. I'm gonna do some deep dive, uh, deep dive videos into some of these mods, some of the more popular ones and give you guys an idea of what it takes to actually do it and run it. Here's all the G files, all these different G files of uh, what the CSSC was, what NISA is. That's the uh, CNET SysOp Support Center, and then NISA was the new image system support, something. I don't recall what that one was exactly. Actually, let's go in here. It's the New Image System Support Association. These are all the original files from all the OGs of, uh, of CNET and, and what became image after CNET 12.0. So these are all the different mod packs 
that people always were putting tons of mods out for CNET 12.0, which made it super fun. And then I even got some of my own mods that I created over the years too on this. And so this is a bunch of MC, uh, uh, pesky art in here. And then you've got, uh, yeah, more, more G files and then animations, which are a whole other world. And then you've got, these are also download sections as well. So, um, so that's that file. And then over here, you've got the, the UDs, which is, for example, this is utilities. So if you go in here, you can see, you can see that uh, these are these, these are UDs for some of the uh, well-known utilities. And so there's a lot of other stuff on here. And then, you know, this is some old games in here. And and uh, uh, and then here's all my boards that I have in here, which is really funny because because there's actually like a, a war a war board where everybody rags on each other. So I guess we did invite or we did in invent social media and all the rage that's around that so so that's the files next video is going to be a full tour of the actual of the actual um bbs but this is just kind of the walkthrough so see you in the next video if you have any questions about anything that i did post below i'll be sure to help you out so hopefully you have a this inspires you to get your own stack of discs out from your storage area and see if they still work good luck to you have a good one